All right, so for those of you just tuning in, I'm about to give my commentary on a two versus two viewer game as part of my weekly Twitch TV live streams. If you wanna get in on this, you can find the link to my Twitch page on the screen or in the video description below. Make sure to follow and enable notifications, and thanks in advance for not using adblock and leaving a like and a comment. So, into this game itself, what is the topic of today's commentary going to be? As you all know, I like to do two things in my commentary. I like to break down concepts that are complicated in an easy to understand way for newer to intermediate level players, as well as provide really in-depth analysis on some of the really tough parts of the game. That way, higher skilled players also get something from my commentary too. Getting that flow down is always an interesting, interesting challenge. But in today's laggy intro, I'd like to focus on breaking down the game from a game flow standpoint. So something a little bit different where I'm going to talk about the early game, the mid game, and the late game, and how your average Age of Empires 2 game should go from start to finish, starting with minute one. At minute one, you'll want to make some houses, scout around, look for your sheep, in this case cows, and you'll also want to make you'll want to gather food first. This will allow you to sustain villager production. The focus of the Dark Age is on setting up the economic foundation for the rest of the game. And the first thing you need to do is to be able to constantly sustain villager production. So we usually see players do this with six villagers on cows. If you want a full build order, you should watch my Night Rush tutorial on YouTube. You can just find a link to that in the video description below, or just search for that. And for those of you watching live, you can type exclamation mark AOE2 tutorial and get a link to it right now. It's delivered straight to you. It's crazy. And then, once you have enough villagers on food to sustain villager production, it's time to build a lumber camp. Why? Because we need to start stockpiling wood to build buildings to win the game. So the objective of Age of Empires 2 is something that... The reason why I'm talking about this from a game flow standpoint is weird, right? Because I think we all know how to win at Age of Empires 2, or do you? And I think that breaking it down actually has a lot of value. Because these are things that we don't consciously think about. It's often purely a subconscious thing that you're just making villagers, making military units. And understanding the whys and the whens, I think, really helps players out. That's why I always like to go in depth and explain why certain civs are so strong, or why these strategies are so powerful. So again, first, we need to sustain village production, then we need to get our economy rolling. Now, in the Dark Age, it's a mistake, obviously, to go too hard on stone or gold, unless you have a very specific build in mind, or we're at the later stages of the Dark Age. But I'm not going to break down the Dark Age super much in depth in this game, but rather, we're going to wait until we get to the Feudal, Castle, Imperial Ages to break down those a little bit more. Because I think we can just watch the tutorial and I think that we all know how to basically start your game of AoE too. Instead, I'm going to talk a little about civilization matchups. Because when you're playing AoE 2, not only should you be setting the economic foundation for the rest of the game in the Dark Age, you also need to start thinking about who's on your team, what are the civilization matchups, what kind of map is this, and what's my game plan. Welcome to the stream, Mr. Dead. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you all. So... First, let's talk about number one. What is the map? Is something you always have to ask yourself. This is a custom map I made myself, but it's a fortress with palisade walls and none of the weird houses and farms and whatnot. So it's essentially very similar to Arabia, but a little bit more closed than Arabia is. We're gonna have to be careful there. A little bit of res lag. Anyone who subscribed, drop that res lag. Uh oh. I think this hunter is gonna be fine. He's doing the border lure. So, you want to be thinking about the map, and you want to ask yourself one of two questions. Is this map open or closed? Or somewhere in between? The answer to that question, like what does open or closed mean, is... Like, how vulnerable are you to enemy rushes? So, a map like Black Forest, it's very easy to wall. The choke points is a closed map. Arena is a closed map. You start with stone walls. It's difficult to rush the L, except in the current metagame, but I'm just talking in general and we're going to pretend that... Because at your skill level, probably, hopefully you're not tower rushing your opponent every game. Although you could do that to get to 3k elo fast, man. 
uh, if ELO worked in AOE 2 HD. Hopefully by the time I post this, hopefully, there's a balance patch that's out and that you can actually gain ELO. Because currently all the people abusing with Trushes, sorry, you can't, your fast track to 3k ELO has been delayed. My bad friends. So, is your map open or closed? Play Arabia, that's an open map. Very easy to rush people. Oasis is an interesting one. It's kind of somewhere in between. This one, I would also say is somewhere in between. Why? Because Palisade Walls are not designed to stop an enemy attack. Fundamental misconception that a lot of players have. Or just walls in general are actually not designed to stop an enemy attack. They're merely designed to give you warning. And the thicker the wall, the more warning. But there better be something that you have on the other side of that wall or what's going to stop them from huffing and puffing and blowing your house down? The answer is nothing. So, I have to be careful about that one. This map does have watchtowers, though, which does help you against the rushes. And the reason that we're playing on this map today, besides the fact that I made it and I just wanted to give people some variety, is that it's a little harder to tower rush someone when they already have a couple defensive towers. And the tower rush strategy, until we get the next balance patch, is just unfathomably strong it's it's oh so big mac or mac b is not actually using his boars he's grabbing them now so he definitely needs to watch the tutorial or i think he is going to be at a slight disadvantage slight disadvantage so you want to look at the map you want to figure out if it's open or closed and that's going to decide whether or not you want to play defensively or offensively early game and that's going to vary between maps. I mean, right now the meta game is super aggressive, so this matters quite a bit less. But if you're playing on the Conquerors, it, it, it matters a lot more. The map determines your strategy first and foremost. And then you also want to be looking at your civs, who's on your team. And this is the ultimate segue for Elements will be playing, aka okay, Ruben A. We will be playing as the Orange Incas. And we have Iso playing as the Green Franks. We've got Sispon playing as the Teal Italians. Big shout out to him for being a huge Patreon pledge. Really appreciate it. We got Mac B playing as the Red Chinese. So, you also need to start thinking about your civilization. The civilization matchups, who you're adjacent to, and start scouting the map and figure out what your game plan actually is. Wow, he actually has to scout in the base. Okay, well, that definitely makes figuring out your game plan a little bit easier. So, in a higher skill level game, a higher skill of a game. This is around the time timestamp that you will want to be paying close attention to to see what your opponent's doing. Do they have a barracks in the Dark Age? You're gonna get rushed, probably. Either in the Castle Age or Feudal Age or Dark Age, probably. Or they're making defensive military units, but an early barracks is a sign of military units. An acute case of them, perhaps. So you gotta keep a close eye on them. In the Feudal Age, it's absolutely imperative that you know what tech buildings that your opponent has. So if they have a blacksmith in the market, that's a fast castle age. If they've got a blacksmith and an archery range or a blacksmith in the stable, scout rush for the former and, sorry, for the former, it's archer rush. For the latter, it is a scout rush. And the timing of these things, you'll pick up from watching my videos and my casts over time. Essentially right now though, since this is a, you know, more of a lower to mid skill level match. I don't expect to see super standard build orders from every player here. But I think it's important that I do community games like this, and I still do content like this because I feel like it's not being offered elsewhere. I and mean, this is where I want your feedback. You know, why do you watch my videos? Why do you like them? What do you like about my commentary? And I think it's actually a breath of fresh air to see players that don't play perfectly. It's something that you can strive, it's a goal that you can strive to achieve, right? You can look at every player in this game and be like, okay, I'm going to apply all the advice here in this video, and I will be better than all of these players. And that you can do. You can watch the Viper and be like, I will try my best to be better than the Viper. That's going to be difficult. Can't make any guarantees on that one. Can't, can't do it. Well, on the stream, Angel Dale, Thank you, uh, I think I thank Lysun for following, as well as Epsilon Toxic and Michael1. Really appreciate it. 95XTX, 32 month resub. Super duper appreciate it. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask me. So now's the time of the game where players should start getting the fuel age. Now, Sispawn, being a Patreon pledger, has access to guides, update posts, preview videos. And he's seen my Night Rush tutorial, so this man knows how fast castle. Not bad, not bad. So. So far, his build order is fairly standard. 
I'd have to say. Everyone else is a little bit on the slower side, and ooh, here comes a barracks for our Inca's friend. So, this is a telltale sign again that he might be making some military units. You definitely want to be communicating with your teammates around this stage of the game on what you're going to do. So, Icio, our green player, is clearly going for a fast castle age and a more defensive one as he does not have a barracks. So, if you're playing on the DLCs in AoE 2, then you want to make sure you get cartography immediately if you have a market, and again, you're just constantly communicating with your teammate, and you want to make sure both of you are on the same page of what you're doing. Miscommunication loses team games. Any player can tell you that. If I had a dollar for every time I flare, expecting my teammate to send me knights, only to find out that he didn't have a stable, I have a million dollars. I wouldn't need to do any work. That'd be great. But alas. Zumi says, I haven't played AoE 2 in 15 years, but I like your voice. Thank you so much, Zatumi. I hope to see you in my future streams and on my YouTube channel. Uh, I will link my social for you. But thank you so much, Zatumi. Thank you, thank you. Good! Seems like these two are communicating. Good, good, good. So, elements might be going for Eagle Warriors. Alright, so you gotta start thinking about whether you're also you're on the pocket or flank. Now, this is a 2v2, but... If it was a 3v3 or 4v4, there are players that are surrounded by their their teammates entirely. So you're called the pocket. And then the flank is obviously the flank. You're the one that's adjacent to an enemy, enemy player. In this case, everybody's a flank. Why does it matter whether or not you're the flank or the pocket? It matters because if you are the flank, you are going to have to play aggressively or prepare to get rushed. You have to prepare for a rush or prepare to rush. If you're in the pocket, you have to prepare to support your flank against the enemy rush or have some sort of game plan. Like, you could boom, and booming is when you advance through the ages really quickly, try to get a super strong economy, and then overwhelm your opponent in the Imperial Age, usually. And you could do that. But you gotta make sure that you communicate to your teammate, because for the love of God, if you're booming, and you don't have any military, and your teammate needs you, you done goofed, sir. You done goofed. <laughs> don't do that. Alright. Sispawn, let's click up the Castle Age. Ooh, Icio. Nice castle timing. This is going to be an interesting game because... Looks like red is a little slower, but green's a bit faster. So you went for the Blacksmith Market and the Stable? That isn't the optimal Night Rush build? Oh, he's going for Scouts? Okay. Interesting. I, I see no reason to build this scout unless he lost his. But he didn't. So I see no reason to do this. Mostly because we look at his economy, right? And this is a classic problem with the Night Rush Eco, is that you usually run out of food, because you need to constantly sustain villager production at this stage of the game still. You need to do that until you hit at least 100 villagers, at least. And it should usually be about 60% of the max total population of the game should be villagers. And gold is usually the more abundant resource here, so I actually don't understand why we're seeing scouts, but... You know, we watch these videos because... Everything's easier in hindsight, and also... Help you improve. Your goal should be... By the end of this, to be better than every single player in this game. And... This will also hopefully allow you to appreciate some of my expert casts as well, where I will go more in-depth on the strategy. Uh, as well as the higher rated games. I have videos for players of all skill levels. It's a common misconception for people that just because I try to explain the basics, I think it's really necessary, especially for an eSport. If we're trying to be an eSport, players, new players come to the game and they do watch tournaments to try and get into the game and learn it. So we need casters that are actually able to explain the flow of the game in a way that someone who is relatively new to it can understand. Otherwise, it's all jargon, and that way we lose a very valuable acquisition point for new players. So it's important. The Eagle Scouts is interesting from Elements. I do wonder if that is delaying his castle time, and it looks like it's not by significant margins. That's good. That's mostly due to the fact that these are 50 gold and 20 food each, so it's not too bad. He needs to cancel one of his Eagle Scout productions and then start researching Eagle Warrior, I think, because Eagle Warriors create in, like, almost half the time. I have to double check as we change the numbers. I believe it's 35 seconds now compared to 50. It used to be 32 seconds, I recall. But I suggested we change it to 35, and that seemed to uh, 
That seems to balance out the Eagle Warrior a lot more, so I'm quite happy with that with that change. Although I do have to say, the current expert metagame, I'm sure there are a lot of sieves, but it can be a bit stale. That's why I really hope that people really enjoy the Resonance 22 Community Cup. So for those of you watching live, it'll be on YouTube soon. I just need to edit it. Those of you who are watching on YouTube, it may or may not already be on YouTube. It depends on how long editing actually takes. But I hope people really enjoy that because we get to see a, a, a different, more relatable side of AV2. It's a higher skill level than this, but... Yeah, I just don't understand this Lily Sky Rush. It's a higher skill level than this. So there's a, there's a lot to be learned, but at the same time we get to see strategies that we don't generally see in expert games. It's a much more relatable skill level. So, I, I mean, I guess the one flip side is he's not wasting any gold by going for this, but again... You go for the Scout Rush and the Feudal Age, not the... not the Castle Age. It's not even a Light Cavalry Rush, which is something that we don't generally see for reasons being it's just too easy to counter. Now, I like this Eagle Warrior Rush. So the Castle Age is usually when most aggression happens on most maps. Chances are, if you're winning the Imperial Age, it's at a fairly low skill level game, and you're probably playing on Black Forest, but... At a higher level, the Castle Age is a really dangerous age to be in if you're playing even on Black Forest or Arena. So... Alright, well... He's got Archers, which are going to get bodied by this, so it's good that he's not engaging, and he's got these Palisade Walls. So what he needs to do is make sure that he's got Villagers inside his base ready to repair some gates at the earliest opportunity. But... Oh, he is advancing the Castle Age, this is good. Also, he should be researching the Men at Arms upgrade, I think, and getting ready to prep this. Okay, so he's not reacting at all. Which will be his downfall, but at least he did build some Palisades. But I would say the not reacting approach is a very dangerous strategy of not having one. Now, Yo's actually forwarding, so he's opening up scouts and forwarding. If he just replaced the scouts in his build with knights, his build would be 30 times better. <laughs> like, I can't even, I can't even describe it. Let me sell like an infomercial to you. His build would be 20 times stronger with Flex State. 20 times stronger. He could survive the toughest of conditions. But, you know, I'm not so sure uh, about the scouts. At the very least, I would expect the light cab upgrade if you're trying to do something a little bit cheeky, you know? Doing something a little bit hot, but he, he's not. Now, Sispawn is defending. He's got crossbows. He's got fletching. No Bodkin arrow, though. I think, it'd be, I think it's a little late. The yeah, Abadkin arrow at this stage in the game. That should be something he should be prioritizing. So once you get to the Castle Age, is, 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 is Mac just gonna die? <laughs> My boys is when you get arson. Give me a res boom. The arson. Get the arson tech. You just go for the go for the throat. How many villagers are in here? Can you do it? I mean, good lord. So by the way, this is when you have to ask yourself. Treat yourself as though you are an archaic piece of software. A series of if-then statements. If teammate, then help. You really gonna let you, you gonna let your teammate, you really, hmm. Okay, so you look at this, right, and you're, you're green. You look at this, you pan the camera over here, and you start res thinking. Ask yourself, am I gonna let this happen? Because you have the choice, it's a yes or no question. The answer is always no! You are not going to let this happen! You are not going to! Pan the camera to your teammate periodically and be like, Hold up, do I need to flex on this man? Or do I need to apply some flex tape because I think there's a little- I think he's got a leak that he needs some holes patched up. Oh no, the militia needs to be a man at arms. Do militia have an attack bonus versus uh, Eagle Warriors? Let me double check this. Is it just men at arms? Yeah, it is. It is just men at arms. I knew it. Yeah, it's zero. Yeah, and then the men at arms, I think, goes to what two? Yep. Longsword is much higher. I believe longsword is. Let's see, six. Yeah, six. Okay, yeah. So it like really scales up. I remember one nerf I proposed was increasing the men at arms damage versus you warriors. That was like a long time ago. That was before. That was like before men at arms were a really solid part of the metagame, and before like the massive power creep set in. So I would not propose that anymore. <laughs> Just Eagle Scouts are tough to balance thing. What, what is this castle placement? 
No, 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 no. The valuable part of your base is here. I don't want to pay attention to this. This is the this is the valuable part of your base. It is the town center. This is the center of the town. Got it? All right. We're all on the same page, right? Okay, so if you're a yo, this is a problem. This is a future problem. This is now. This is later. Now. Later. 2v2, not 1v2. You cannot afford to throw your teammate away like this. Also, why is this castle here? What is it protecting? Oh my. What is this protecting? Also, when you're building your castle, not only do you have to ask yourself, what is it protecting, but you also have to ask yourself, is the castle protected? The answer to each of these is no. And Militia, my friend, unfortunately, they've got a value for their attack bonus for Eagles, but zero. There we go! Yes! Yes! Protect the town center to win the game. However, you should build it over here. Why? Because it protects his main gold and his town center. I'd expect the second town center at this stage of the game. I was supposed to be talking more about the flow of the actual game, but we might not get to the Imperial Age, so... That's just the fun of my videos. So anyway, in the Castle Age, another thing on your mind is town expansion. Sure, you start with the town center, but wouldn't you want to make multiple town centers now that you get the ability to do that? The town center in the early game... Wow, nice. These are some pretty good manual shots. They're not fantastic, but they're good. The town center is like a Death Star that you have to avoid in the early game. You absolutely... Ooh, okay, that's, that's good. A bunch of uh, pretty good manual shots by Oh, nice. So, Town Center's Death Star in the early game. When you're rushing, you have to stay out of six range radius. So the Death Star is pretty good, we can all agree, right? Don't you want more than one Death Star? What if the Death Star also produced villagers or TIE fighters? I don't know. I'm Whatever encourages you and makes Town Center's cool enough to you to actually build more than one of them. If you have no idea what you're doing, you're just going to win games by building a second and third Town Center and just pumping out villagers. Seriously, bigger economy diplomacy wins games at lower level AOE too. Everyone needs to be better than everyone in this game by the end of this video. That's that's the goal. And then watch some of my other content. Go deeper down the rabbit hole. Watch the Nightmare tutorial. They get to like 1700. Okay, now he's making knights, but dude, y y there's a breach. Orange spy in the base. <laughs> you can't. Oh my god. Uh, asthma. Well, I'm the stream, OP. Hey, man, dude. So anyway, the Feudal Age is either about rushes, counter units, or in some maps, or as the team's pocket, advancing through it quickly to get to the Castle Age. Even though Feudal Age rushes are very strong, you still always want to get to the Castle Age eventually. The Castle Age and Imperial Ages are both huge spikes in power, to do the diversity in units, buildings, and technologies. Utilizing each new bonus, such as siege weapons, town centers, castles, gunpowder, and elite upgrades are all key to victory. The types of units that you'll make will depend on your civilization, and if you'd all like, I'll do a more in-depth video on the Castle Age and Imperial Age, as they both have a ton of depth to them. I'm also considering doing a video on when to get each technology, but you can still find useful playlists below. He understands the rule of two. When you got a teammate, give him a hand. Also, he understands that he's got this situation on lockdown. Even with no micro whatsoever, even allowing the watchtower to snipe off two of his own Kameox, he's fine. Imagine how demoralizing that must be, being these three guys standing there and you just got orders from Ruben to attack this building while you're watching those two guys just get shot with an arrow one at a time. Don't think about that too much. Actually, think about it a little bit. That's a little strange. <laughs> so anyway. I would like to know when Yo is going to address the elephant in the room, which has nothing to do with elephants at all. It's the Incas. I like this castle placement when you're when you're castle dropping your opponent because, for obvious reasons, you were denying your opponent a stone and a gold mine. So, this game's not going to be the Imperial Age, so I guess this isn't going to be my flow of the game. This is just going to be more of, a, I guess, an introductory commentary, because my last one was... Much more in-depth. I mean, as far as matchups go, here's what Red could do to get out of 1400s. Watch literally anything I've posted, including this video. 
If he okay, so now he's put down the second town center 35 minutes in the game. Let's take 10 minutes off that second town center and let's add another one onto that order, okay? Let's make Mac B into a big Mac and supersize him. Becoming faster takes practice, but by watching my videos, the hope is to change your thought process and decision making. A bigger economy wins games and lets you sustain a larger military. And as the caster, I get to see everything. We all get the luxury of seeing that. That is a disgusting manual shot by you. Well played. Absolutely disgusting. The skirm choice is interesting in that it gets, it gets hard counted by the Eagle Warriors, but I do like, though, the skirms versus this army. I mean, this is interesting, definitely. The Eagles can't engage because of the Knights. This is interesting. I like the Pikeman choice. I mean, he's applying a lot of pressure. He just needs his teammate to not die. So I, I can see the logic. I definitely can. And the men at arms are here now. Good. Something with an attack bonus. Thank goodness we gave them plus one bonus versus buildings because this castle, guys, it's going down. Say goodbye. No, do not walk out of the minimum range of the building. Don't do that. Oh my god. Could have been worse. Siege Workshop should be town center. Okay. So there are multiple, when I do coaching for players, there are multiple tier levels of players. And what Mac, Mac is at the level right now where he does understand the game, which is good, but he needs to get the fundamentals down. Uh, so, man, if you watch this later, I love you. I hope you come back. I hope we get to see Mac 2, because Mac 1 does not have the most important part of the game down. Build more town centers, make more villagers. You can't play Age of Empires 2 when you have an economy of, like, oh, God. Guess how many villagers he has. That's right, that's what I was thinking. Just, yeah. If you have uh, less than a villager a minute, you're doing it wrong, because it takes less than 30 seconds to create a villager, so I think you're in trouble. So Sispawn is in deep trouble, because Yo's playing this very well with his knights and his skirms, and it's great, great of elements, aka Ruben, AOE2, to come in here with the assistance. The Eagle Warriors able to pick off the Mangonels with their plus three versus Siege is actually really significant, because it gives them a nice clean 10 versus a mangonel that is super significant that's without blacksmith upgrades with blacksmith upgrades you're not killing the mangonel uh, well uh, actually yeah well i mean it helps it depends regardless though the nice clean 10 is very significant for dealing with siege weapons which i'll have happen to have in your number you can also repair your 10 center by the way arson is the best tech in the game is what this video should be titled i don't i don't know i think arson's the best tech in the game I think I figured it out. I don't know what to title this. I mean, this is supposed to be about the flow of the game, but it's also going to be about... It's about teamwork. It's about arson. It's about how militia don't have an attack bonus versus the town center. Did he repair the town center or not? He might not have. I, I'm a little... Hmm. Okay, I like these building Chukanus, though, and his reaction was to build the defensive town center. Whenever you're coaching anybody or offering advice, always... And, and, and this goes true with all, this, any team game you ever play. Compliment your teammates on the things they do right. Even if they're doing a lot of things wrong, you'd be surprised at how much of a difference it makes to keep team morale up, and especially when you're teaching someone who's new. Always try and focus on the things that they do right. And here, you can find it. He built a defensive castle that was close to his town center. Was it in the optimal placement? No, actually, the optimal placement was probably about over here. Because it's not actually protecting his town center. He also got fletching. That's good. He got fletching for his watchtowers, his castle, and his Chuko News. Are Chuko News good versus Eagle Warriors? They're okay. They're okay due to the repetitive arrow fire. It's it's fine. They're not excellent, but they're not they're not bad. And uh, Yo's had this is an ambitious castle. I like this. I need Res Flex emote. I also need emote ideas. I need them from Twitch chat. I feel like our community doesn't have enough fresh memes. It's been too long. It's been too long, we don't have fresh memes. What are the cool hit memes of the day? I guess... Res Disaster? I don't know. Anyone any opponents? Okay, so someone did get to the Imperial Age, so I can still make this the flow of the game standpoint. The only... My general video is tailored to someone who is at a higher skill level than the players in this game. But I do this video as a jumping on point, so that you can enjoy the rest of my content. Because I have heard from some people, even though I hear from all sorts of conflicting feedback, that 
I need a good jumping on point. Here's a good jumping on point. So flow of the game. Imperial Age is a huge power spike. And I talk about this more in depth in other videos because we're not gonna get here. Imperial Age is when you really need to start thinking about your army composition. So you need to be making multiple types of units and unit counters. Because in the Castle Age, your economy is smaller, your tech tree is smaller, you have access to fewer units and ways to deal with whatever your opponent's build is. This watchtower is just, has so many confirmed kills. Play of the game. I, I don't know what I'm looking at. Nice. See, you'll not, you won't see this in ECL, and if you do, contact the admins immediately because something is wrong. I like that he built a second town center. This is good. This is good. But he, yeah, so Mac, I hope he watches this later. He has missed out on the most fundamental aspect of AoE2, which is the his economy is literally non-existent at all. He, until you can make villagers, that is your number one focus. He needs to get that down before he can do literally anything. Um, well, Orange is going to be sending some assistance. This is good. Uh, Sispon is evacuating, which is good. A lot of new players seem to just bend over and die when they lose their base, and this gambit on Yo's part is going to pay off, so this game will go to Imp, so I can still make this flow of the game related. Now, here's the thing. Let's say it's 40 minutes in the game. It's 40 minutes in, and you're not in the Imperial Age yet. Well, tough shit. You have to treat it like it's 40 minutes in the game. You do. Ah, oh, I just got demonetized. Whatever. It'd be so funny, I, I bleep out everything with, uh, I'll just bleep out everything. From now on, my stream is going to be as bland as humanly possible. We're gonna get a mod that removes all blood and skeletons from the game because spooky bones and skeletons are... I don't know, can't sleep at night. Okay, we're gonna replace everything with teddy bears. Everything is gonna be squishy. The swords are gonna be rubber. The buildings are not gonna be catching on fire, they're actually gonna be spewing confetti everywhere. That way... My videos be more advertiser friendly and I can pay the rent. Let me know if you approve of that idea. It's gonna take me a while to replace every weapon in the game with like a rubber one, but I think I can do it. I think I can. Think of these buildings as little pinatas that just are, that's a pile of candy on the ground. It's a pile of candy, don't you wanna eat it? I know I do. Once you get to the Imperial Age. You need to diversify your army comp and your technologies. Don't forget to get your upgrades. Why? Because again, your opponent has access to counters. So at this point, if you're making nothing but Eagle Warriors, which is what uh, Orange is doing, which is fine, you see a big battle going on over here, and he might win it just because Yo is in the Castle Age, and also I've got the high ground, and we all know how that ended for Anakin. Not so good. Eagle Warriors do have a small attack bonus versus Cavalry, which does not make them beat Knights, no. It's a little closer than you'd think, just because the Eagle Warriors, you can kind of mask them up a little easier, just because, you know, they cost primarily gold and not food, and it's a little easier to come by, but... The Knights will win. The Knights will win 1v1 by a long shot. But yeah, you need to you need to make a wider variety of units, so it's good to see Sisbon doing that. So here's a good example of an Imperial Age-esque army, army at this stage in the game. Pikemen plus crossbowmen. Why? Because the crossbowmen die to things that the pikemen kill. What do the crossbows die to? You, generally speaking, the cavalry, and then the pikemen take the cavalry down. Now that army is quite weak to siege, but you know. Thank you so much, Echo, for subscribing. Really appreciate it. Hope to see you in the future. Don't forget that Twitch Prime, while free, and a great way to support the channel, does not automatically read now. Thank you so much, T-Tropical, for following. Thank you so much, Jinx, for gifting a sub to Odokarix. Really appreciate the support from everybody. So Yo's in trouble, but he's in the Imperial Age now. And the first thing you should do when you get to the Imperial Age is, generally speaking, you know, trebuchet or conscription are two really big things. Trebuchet, conscription, chemistry, those are all very big things that should be on your mind. In no particular order, it kind of depends on what build you're going for, but Yo is going to get 2v1 here, and... You guys know why? Because he's, uh, he's missing somebody. Uh, what's this guy's name? Uh, Mac B, right. He's missing him. Oh, because Mac B is not making villagers. Alright. 
Nobody is allowed to play Age of Empires 2. <laughs> Until they know. The golden rule. People people ask me all the time. Resonance, why do you say... Or why do you mention... That you need to make 100 plus villagers every game. Why do you keep mentioning that? Because I know that new players come to my channel all the time. I don't know where the hell their onboarding process is. And I try to do focus videos as well and a wide variety of different types of commentary and community games. Just everything to mix it up, right? So that my content doesn't get stale. But I still mention that every now and then because I don't know when your jumping on point is going to be. And Mac B has watched my stream before. So if this is his jumping on point, he, he needs to get the, the, this rule down. Prano Tano. Everybody in the Twitch chat, let me know. Do you, do you know? To make 100 plus villagers? If you do, you got it. <laughs> what a game this is. Thank you so much. So come welcome for subscribing to Twitch Prime. Okay, so I think Yo's aggression has completely petered out. But one of the reasons why he's in this game is because he's built multiple town centers. So however, he is going to get Eagle Warriored. It's really bizarre and actually a little unnerving, honestly, to see elite Eagle Warriors with no unique technology attached to them. No couriers for uh, Ruben A. Rita. But... That's okay. He doesn't need it, but good. He's di he's diversifying his portfolio. He's diversifying his army comp. I like this. Now, if you don't know what units to build for your sieve, just don't build this just one unit later in the game. Just if it's not one unit and they're like a different type, and your sieve has full upgrades for them, you probably didn't screw up. If you don't know what you're doing in an RTS game, just do a lot of stuff. Chances are. Chances are you're gonna hit something right. Keep throwing darts, eventually you'll hit the board, right? You look at the Franks, you don't know how to play the Franks? Easy. Uh, cavalry plus 20% hit points. Boom! Stables. Boom. Throwing Axemen? Alright, it's, it's a thing, it throws axes. Okay, alright. Is that the optimal army comp? No, but you don't look like a dingus. Here's what make you look like a dingus. Oh shit, this is the expansion, so I was gonna say making cav archers. It's the expansions, they're good now, and also, pff, Franks get more HP on them. Alright, here's what make you look like a dingus. You know the Teutons, you're making this? What? No. Now, the Teutons, I guess, are a bad example, because the Teutons actually aren't really, it's not really straightforward. But hey, at least this is infantry civilization. You, you usually go knights this time. Uh, but yeah. Hey, cavalry. Hey, archers. So yeah, there you go. Figure it out. It's not too hard. Uh, so, green's evacuating into what appears to be Orange's base. Uh, I think it's safe to say we can fast forward through the rest of this one. I mean, uh, now I'll take a Q&A, any questions from anyone. I feel like I have uh, done my job. I've delivered my approachable commentary, and now I can rest easy. Knowing that you will all share this video with anyone who's new. And you just learn the basics. Here comes the slingers. I mean, the slingers don't actually make any sense here because there's no infantry. There's, there's no infantry. Now, slingers are a much better unit than I think people initially realized. Okay, like, the th one of the things in AoE 2 is people think they understand balance. Oh, it's more complicated than they think. As someone who's worked on all the expansions, I... Oh, everyone was calling slingers bad. Dude, you can't compare them to ghetto hand cannoneers. People for so long, they have selective memory, we're trying to suggest elite slingers need to exist. They absolutely did not. Couriers just needed a rework. The slinger's fine. It's got comparable stats to an arbalest. It's not the same, but it's got comparable stats. The key thing is, it's plus 10 versus infantry. Yeah, it has significantly lower attack damage than a hand cannoneer does. They serve very different roles, and you can make this in the castle age. Also... You're comparing apples to oranges. In this case, he's actually literally orange. The slinger can kill other stuff. It's it's more comparable to crossbowmen. Like it's it's useful unit. It's useful unit. Also, the magiers. Anyone who knew their shit back when uh, the forgotten came out, the magiers are one of the best civs, and they were by far the best forgotten civ. The only reason that they ever needed buffs in the first place was because of a massive power creep in African Kingdoms. Massive power creep. So seeing all those buff Magyars, Magyars are trash threads, thank goodness they didn't get like super elite over buffed. Although I do think they got some pretty huge buffs. I don't know. But yeah, I mean the Magyars were really, really good. They were good. 
It's just that no, there weren't that many players playing at that high of a level back then. And they all left around patch 4.0. So a lot of them missed out on African Kingdoms. So. Here comes the longsword. And as far as I'm concerned, my, my commentary job here is done. I will break down the Imperial Age in a more advanced video because that's significantly more complicated. The Dark Age, to reiterate, is about setting the economic foundation for the rest of the game and figuring out what your opponent is doing by scouting his base. The Feudal Age is the Transitional Age. It's when you're starting your attack, it's when you are refining your build, it's where you're picking up from the Dark Age. The Castle Age is the Age of Expansion. Expand your economy, expand your military, focus on making the units that are strong for your sieve. Oh, you were designed before you have to build this castle. Well played, yo, well played indeed. But alas, in the end, the 2v1 is very difficult. And the Imperial Age is about making counters, making sure that you have a balanced army comp, units that cover each other's weaknesses. I cover this in my tutorial, which is something like economy management, uh, army composition, that tutorial. That one's a really good one. It's a little bit older, but it's very good. And the Imperial Age is also about ending the game. So, in the Castle Age, you can actually generally stall out a game, and one of the really good things that Red did in this game was build a defensive castle. You can actually stall out the game. No, he just disconnected, he just unplugged his Ethan. Alright. Alright, buddy. Uh, so... <laughs> anyway. The Imperial Age is the Stall Breaker Age. It's when you close things out. So... If you are in danger in the Castle Age, you want to... Become a turtle, close up in your shell, that's why it's called turtling. Build a defensive castle, protect the weak, soft underbelly of your base. Not here, probably around the town center, the center of the town, town center. The poison for Cusco, Cusco's poison. And, you might be able to stall until the Imperial Age. But the Imperial Age has, mul this game is so well designed has multiple things in it that guarantee your game comes to a close. The trebuchet, or as I like to call it, the world destroyer, comes into play. He who gets the first trebuchet out tends to win if the game is close, but it depends. The game has to be close. If the game's not close, he who gets the first trebuchet out just <laughs> eats you entirely. <laughs> Trevor Wars are a thing that I go over very frequently in competitive games because they tend to be quite decisive, but 16 range and 200 damage tends to do the trick. Tends to do the trick indeed. Bombard cannons, mangonels, cavalry, eagle warriors, etc. All good answers to these. All good answers. No, you can't convert them at range. It's interesting though, uh, monks plus block printing is actually a fairly good tech against uh, bombard cannons. But the Varkan is really good for straps. But you actually have to manually like walk all the way up to the trebuchet. Interesting how that's coded. Trebs, great stall breaker. Definitely great stall breaker. I would say it's generally speaking, unless you're really confident, <laughs> not worse. It's not worth massing up a ton of battering rams in the castle age and just going for the throat. That there will be situations where that works, and I usually cover that and break the meta. And sometimes you do want to do that, but. You could just get to the Imperial Age and 100% guarantee your win. So, in the Imperial Age, lots of villagers, lots of different units, win the game. You also want to start thinking about the trade line. So 50 minutes in, I would say, is when you really want to start thinking about if you have a teammate making trade carts, and if 120 villagers feels like a lot to manage and you don't know how to assign them, it's just what resources you're low on when you're making your army, you'll eventually figure out the correct distribution just by playing enough of the game. And trade cards, you're going to need a lot of them in team games. Put your markets in the corner, try not have their paths obstructed. You want it to be the longest straight line. So it's not, you know, the trade cards don't, if they get like bunched up or have to walk around a forest, you're losing money. But yeah, you want to start making trade cards around 50 minutes in before the gold mines run out. If you start making trade cards before the gold mines run out, uh, then that's, <laughs> it's like trying to cauterize the wound after you lost the limb. Don't do it. Did I get demonetized again? This is a struggle. I appreciate everyone's support on Patreon. <laughs> Man, I gotta overdub myself with a, uh, with Microsoft Sam and hope that nobody notices. 
and a Microsoft Sam talk about nothing but Coca-Cola, Taco Bell, <laughs> and McDonald's. <laughs> Thank you so much. Dabu6 for the 45 bits. He says, you need to go full masterpiece, fast in with the gunpowder with not Turks. It was a decent strategy with emollients due to the 80% faster research in chemistry. Thank you so much. Who is Quark for following? Really appreciate it. Did I thank Echo for subscribing and Ahsoka Mocha? I think I did. And T Tropical, thank you for following. Remember, everybody who subscribes to Twitch Prime, please renew it every month. And it's always better if you can, instead of Twitch Prime, use a regular sub. But yeah, GG well played. GG well played. The president's nothing wrong. <laughs> who needs an uh, Imperial Agent to get around by? I mean, yeah, it can work. Isis said they ganged up on me. Yeah, you can't, you can't win the 2v1, man. Can't win the 2v1. So, in that case, I think it would have helped to help out Big Mac, but what he needed to do is make more villagers. Villager high of 29 will win you approximately 0% of games. A villager high of 29, download Resonance Bot, and practice versus that. Toggle the advice on, read the FAQ on the Steam Workshop, which exists, I promise you. I talk about it a lot. I know it. People probably don't read it, but it is there. <laughs> 29 villagers is not going to get you anywhere. It's also women like men, statistically. And you can look this up. I don't want anyone to pay for a uh, JSTOR subscription unless they want to, or JSTOR sponsors me. Wink. But there are multiple scientific papers that you can read that show a very strong correlation. It's not causation, but it's a correlation between men who make a lot of villagers and men who are surrounded by attractive women. So, if you want to be surrounded by attractive women, your village account should look more like this. It works. Don't believe me? Try it yourself. Try it yourself. Now, if you enjoyed watching this video, please leave a like and a comment, as it does help me out a lot. If you felt like my commentary was a little bit too basic for you, well, don't worry, pal, because I've got more advanced commentary in most of my videos. Probably need to reorganize my playlist. Your feedback is appreciated as always if you enjoyed this. Uh, please don't use adblock. Disabling adblock helps me a lot, as well as not skipping my ads, as well as supporting me on Patreon. I'd love to do more community games. I'd love to continue doing this, but in order to do it, I need your support. So even just a dollar helps out a lot. So, and if you learned anything, please let me know what you learned as that does help me tailor my, and improve my commentary. So, thank you so much for watching as always. Stay tuned for those of you watching live. There's going to be more games after this, so stay tuned. Those on YouTube, really, really appreciate the support. Check out my social media. Dr. Sate this trick. <gasps> thank you so much, Vesimo Cassini, for donating $11. really appreciate it. This is Longtime Lurker, First Time Supporter. Well, it, it really means the world to me. Thank you so much, Vasimo. I do what I do, and I did this specific video because I know that there are going to be new players coming in with the Escape Champions League. And you can find some of my casts on that on my YouTube page as well. And these new players need a jumping on point. They do. And hopefully, this is something that really helps you all out a lot. Because the average skill level of an AoE2 player is a lot lower than I think people realize. Al Ghul says, I like to keep seeing viewer games. Well, thank you so much for the 1,000 bits. That is the way to make sure I get to keep doing this. Because I want to. I love this. Why do I like this so much is a good question. Mostly because, and you'll see this from the Resonance 22 Community Cup, is that... I get to see all sorts of really cool strategies, and I get to talk about a really wide variety of topics because people are all over the place in skill level. And I love to watch perfect players too, but here, anything is possible. And I just want to give a thanks as well to the every player that participated here. Well played to Ruben AoE2, ICO, Sispawn, and MacB. MacB did do some good things, and we have to emphasize that. For starters, he actually had a positive unit KD. You can attribute that to his lack of much of an army or population to really lose. But he built two castles, which is really good. And he moved his base over to the right. He just forgot that 29 needs to add about 80 villagers onto that, and I think he's going to be good. 
I see the makings of the Viper in him. He just needs more villagers. Congratulations, still my coconut. Glad to hear that your AB3 AI has improved. Now, for those of you who are looking for a good way to practice getting into the game, playing an AB2 HD, I really recommend Resonance Bot. You can find a link in the video description, and it is a really good AI to learn the game. Let's see, I am just going to double check real quick that I didn't miss any questions. Henry says, so Resonance 22, so there's the bonus damage against buildings AB1. Touche. Gaius asked me earlier. Do I find mass photon mans to be a viable strategy? Absolutely. Absolutely. But the Cobra car isn't very good. Now, Robo is very good at the game, but if you ask Robo how many Cobra cars he makes in his average game of Age of Empires 2, he's actually going to say zero, and that's because the Cobra car is a bad unit. It's just weak. That's why. I mean, really, what does it even counter? I don't see it used in any competitive games, therefore, it must be awful. <laughs> Did Pete say to 2v1 you need to mass a Rambai? That is correct. <laughs> I was joking about the Cobra family, but yeah, Pete's right, yeah. To 2v1, you do need to... Actually, no, I have a video on my YouTube channel of Pete 3v1-ing with the Rambai, so I think Pete's selling himself a little bit short, let's be honest here. <laughs> Let's be honest, I think he's selling himself a bit short. Got the 3v1 with the Rambai, man. That happened. Guy said, the problem with turtling in the corner is you run a resource really fast and get surrounded. Indeed. The slice of the map he carved for himself was too small. Too small. Not enough villagers. Excalibur, but which resbot is the best? There's a bunch of them on Steam. Type exclamation mark custom AI. It's resonance about 5-1C. It's always the latest version is the one you want. Always, always, always. Now, if I said anything during this game that made you chuckle, I really encourage you all to actually take more Twitch clips. It'd be nice. I enjoy always watching those. As well as checking out the ResQuote subreddit. Again, links to all that stuff's in the video description, but, like, if you're on Twitch, I think I have a list of bot commands, and one of them is what, uh, explanation mark, press quotes. Boom. We'll be right back after the break. Appreciate the support, everybody. Thank you all so much for supporting community games. I think it's important that we do this. I think it is. Sam, for the $5, thank you so much. He says, I always appreciate people who keep old games alive and sustain the community. I'm not into AOE, but I'm happy to support. That's why I do this, man. That's why I do it, Sam. And that's why I've been doing it for so long. Because people need a jumping on point for Age of Empires 2. They do. And hopefully people send them my way. And thanks to everyone's support, I'm still able to do this after so many years. It means a lot to me. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to show your support for the content that I do for games besides just Age of Empires 2.